G'day and welcome to Ben's Works. On this week's episode, we're going to make a birthday present using a vintage micro machine. So a good friend of mine asked if I'd make a birthday present for his one-year-old. I asked him what he had in mind and he really didn't have too much of an idea. He left it up to me. And I remembered when I was a kid, I used to collect these micro machines. And I thought it'd be really cool if I put one inside an egg, that way he could keep it forever. I remember when I was a kid I used to go to the shops with my mum and dad, and I would always annoy them to buy me these things. And as you can see here I've got quite a few, I've got some really nice looking car ones. I've got speedboats, aeroplanes, buses, trucks, I've even got a Formula One car. As you can see I've got quite a few in here, there's probably about 150 to choose from. But I think the one I like the most is this army bulldozer. I think it just looks awesome and I think it's got enough detail on there that when we put it in an egg and it magnifies it's going to look really cool. I'm not sure if you guys can read that but this was built in 1987 so this is over 30 years old. Now that I've chosen my micro machine the next step is to find a piece of burl. I've decided to choose this one. It's really spiky and mountain looking and I think it'll suit the bulldozer really well. My first step will be rough cutting it using my bandsaw and because I'm going to use a plastic cup as my mould, I just need to make it the same size as my base. Now I've got the rough shape, I'm going to go to the disc sander and round all the corners. I'll be using my disc sander to shape the piece of burl. You'll probably notice that my table is on a slight downward angle and that angle matches the same as the angle on the cup. That way when I shape the burl, it fits in nice and snug. You'll probably notice that I kept checking the fitment in the cup. I just wanted to sneak up on it. It's nice and snug now, so we'll move on to the next step. Because I want the bulldozer to sit flat on the piece of burl, I've just got this engraving tool here and I've just put a grinding stone in the end of it. I'm just gonna grind down these peaks until it sits nice and flat. So I've got that all carved out, I probably could have used a better tool, but that's all I had on hand. You can see here that the bulldozer sits in there really nice, it sits deep in the burl, it even looks like it's pushing a bit of the burl out of the way. So the next step now is to colour it and get it ready for casting. To be honest, I actually like the look of it against the natural timber. If it wasn't for a one year old, I'd probably leave it, but I think I need to jazz it up a little bit. So I'm just going through my container of pigments from Solar Color Dust and I'm trying to find one that's got maybe some earthy tones in it. I think I'm going to go with this chameleon pigment. It's the red, orange, yellow, green color shifting pigment. So let's give that a go. The chameleon pigments always work best on a black base and I'm going to do that by using some acrylic paint. Now I'm just going to dry that with a hairdryer before I apply the pigment. That's all nice and dry. So now I'm going to apply the pigment. 
Now the best way I've found to do this is I take myself some UV resin, put it in one of these plastic shot glasses, and then mix in the pigment. Once I've got a nice consistency, I then paint it onto the burl. The key to having a nice colour shift all comes down to the amount of pigment you use. So I like to use probably a bit more than normal, that way I get a really nice colour shift. Now just mix it all together and just check your consistency just to make sure you're happy with it. Now we just brush it on. When painting this on make sure you take your time, you want to fill in all the little voids. You didn't think I was going to leave the middle black, did you? Now that's all finished, now we need to cure the UV resin and there's two ways we can do that. One way is to grab a UV torch and the other way is to go outside and put it in the sun. Now because it's a beautiful day outside, I'm going to go do that. A good tip if you've got any leftovers, because you are using UV resin and it doesn't cure by itself, just grab yourself a cup Put it over the top and save it for next time. It only needs about 15 minutes and it'll be fully dry. Out here in the sun you can really see how the colour shift works. On this angle it's purple or mauve looking. Then when you switch to the other side it starts to look gold and copper. That feels nice and dry now, so let's take it inside and stick in the bulldozer. Hey Snow. To stick in the bulldozer, I'm just going to take some more UV resin, just put a couple of drops around in some key places, that way it'll lock it in place. And to cure it this time, I'm just going to use my UV torch. So the burl doesn't float while I'm casting, I'm just going to glue it to the base of the cup. As always, I'll be using Artcast by Just Resin. If you want to try this for yourself, you can grab 10% discount by using code word BENSWORKS10. Make sure we're mixing your resin. Always scrape down your sides and your bottom. If you don't have a pressure pot, try and pour nice and slow to eliminate your bubbles. Lucky for me I have one, so I don't have to worry too much. All looks pretty good. Now I'm going to pop this in the pressure pot and we'll check on it in about four hours. So I've just pulled this out of the pressure pot and you can see here we've got a really nice clear casting. So I'm just going to cut the cup off now and then I'll sand the bottom down and I'll get it ready to glue to the waste block. Now I'm just going to go sand this bottom off. That's all nice and flat. Now I'm just going to use some 5 minute epoxy and glue it to the waste block. Now I'm going to let that sit overnight, the way I can turn it tomorrow. As most of you know I upgraded my lathe recently, 
I've graded to the WL46A from Hair and Forbes, and I've had a few people ask me what I think about it. And now that I've been using it for a couple of months and I've turned a heap of resin on it, I've got to admit, this thing is a beast. It just doesn't miss a beat. Check out my resin pile. That's how much resin I've been turning. Looks like Mount Everest. Normally when I make my dragon eggs, I use a silicon mould like this, that way it reduces the amount of waste that I have, but when I cast an object inside I want to have a bigger blank, that way I've got more room to move so I don't nick the item inside. The unfortunate part about that, I do create a lot of waste. Now I've got my rough shape sorted out, the next thing I'm going to do is take my skew chisel, get all the tooling marks out, fine tune the shape a little, for this I'll turn the speed up to about 1200 and then we'll get a nice finish. So I've finished shaping now and I'm quite happy with that shape. The trick to using the skew chisel is just to take your time. You want to get as many tooling marks out as you can because that will make it easier for our next step which is sanding. Because the chisel has left a nice finish I'm able to start sanding at 400 grit then I'll run 600, 800 and 1200. Well that's all the sanding finished, now I'm going to move on to polishing. To polish the egg I'm just going to use my bench grinder with a buffing wheel and I'm just going to use some Yorkshire grit. My last step is to put it back on the lathe and part it off. You can see there that the base parted off nice and clean. I just want to get rid of this little bit in the middle. I'm just going to do that with some sandpaper. Now the bottom's all nice and cleaned up. I'll give it a quick pass on the buffing wheel and we're finished. One final polish with a microfiber and we're done. Check that out. That looks amazing. The bulldozer looks awesome in there. I'm super happy with how this has turned out. It's super clear. The color changing pigment looks awesome. This thing is just bloody unreal.
Well guys, what do you think? Do you like the Micro Machine birthday present? I know Marshall's only one now, but he's going to have this egg for many, many years. And in a few years' time, he'll be able to go on YouTube and see how it was made. Well, that's all for this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you guys want to buy some of my creations, I have them in my Etsy store. I'll leave a link in the description. And if you want to see some sneak peeks of upcoming projects, you can check out my Instagram page. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.